Hello, we are Stone Lizard Hops and this is our instructional video on how to harvest hop rhizomes. So right here we have a Columbus crown. This is a beautiful crown. This is actually a crown that got root bound originally in the beginning. As you can see, this is one massive rhizome that I am holding right here. This is a great diagram for you to be able to look at how a rhizome crown is set up. So as you can see, the nodules are coming up that are coming up purple right here. This is uh, the purple is actually due to excessive nitrogen that's starting to form right now during the cold time in the season. But this is always how you're going to see shoots coming up. Um, so the beauty about a rhizome is, is a rhizome is a powerhouse. This is a perennial plant, meaning it will come back every year. And this plant is a very hardy plant. As you can see, it extends itself out very far. It's a creeping type of plant, uh, Jacnusis humulusis, uh, humulus, I'm sorry. And uh, as you can see, this is the beginning of a rhizome that's forming right here in my hands. So what happens is, is a rhizome is a actual stem. Think of it like a branch to a tree, but that grows underground. These would be the little shoots that come up from a tree that's actually coming out as its own branches. So what uh, rhizome is composited of is proteins and starches and glucose and basically carbon material. But these little pieces will turn into little powerhouses. One little piece will produce asexually, meaning it does not have to breed with something else. And you could actually use this piece to start a whole nether plant that is replicated much like a clone or propagated of this species of plant. So once again, this one's a Columbus. So let's go ahead and take a look at our tools that we're going to use. Cleanliness is one of the most important things out of this. I do have alcohol wipes where I will use Everclear to go ahead and clean my tools whenever I am jumping between different crowns because you do not want to spread any form of disease. If one crown had a disease and you did not spot it inside the rhizome itself or started noticing it on the plant whenever it was beginning such as downy mildew, anything such as that, um, you don't want to spread that into your next set of crowns because then you're going to end up contaminating your field. So it's very important cleanliness is a main thing. As between the demonstration of the crowns I'm showing you right now, these two right here are all going into propagation. So I'm running off of the same piece. That's why these look dirty right now. But originally these are always completely cleaned. You want to make sure you have the most cleanest materials you can work with and tools. So let's get started. I use this to go ahead and drag out my dirt. It's just a basic garden um, rake. You want one of these, that way it kind of helps you out whenever you're trying to drag something out. You don't want to be shoving your hand inside the crown and breaking these beautiful little precious nodules that are starting to come off. Each one of those can be a plant and that could be money to you or your farm. Or it could be, you know, beer if you're, brew if you're doing this just for beer. So, important piece. Next, we have a trowel. So a trowel is always good because you can take out good scoops of dirt, like I said, without shoving your hand in there. It's got a pointed tip so you can take out, you know, different portions of dirt while you're working with it. Um, I personally like this plastic one. The metal ones are really nice, but they like to bend. This plastic one seems to work really well with us over here at this farm. Next, we have some Hydro Farm sh uh, shears. Uh, these have been through everything and back, so they do look horrible right now on the bottom end. But... These are really important too because whenever you get somewhere that's a tight space that you can't get your razor in or you need to get a piece in, uh, you need to be able to clip it. So once again, this is a really great piece. Sorry about the interruption on that. Next, I like to use this. This is my favorite tool for anything working with rhizomes. This piece right here has this beautiful pick at the end. And I like to use this as my filler whenever I'm digging through the soil. As you can see, I have a serrated back edge right here. This allows me to go ahead and cut little types of roots that are holding me and anchoring me in. So I don't want to be anchored in while I'm trying to yank on a rhizome and all of a sudden I split it in half, which is very easily and very, very common. I have a bladed end that runs on the edges all along here. This allows me to be able to slice and cut if I need to. But as a... Uh, this piece itself, uh, I do believe it's used for more of a carpentry uh, source, but it is a great piece to have. So then we have a razor. Razors are highly important. I like to use uh, a good razor with a good grip. You don't want this thing to slide out of your hand. 
you want clean blades always this blade's got a lot of dirt on it right now from us working just a second ago but as you can see i got a good grip right here it's firm i won't have this slipping while i'm trying to yank on like a two two inch thick rhizome and all of a sudden this glides through my hand or it cuts across my crown and scolds the whole crown where i don't want to ruin my money or my crowns next i have a machete so a machete you wouldn't think would be important for this process, but actually this is a highly important piece because whenever it comes down to having to take out vines that are sitting up from your year's harvest and you have this excess left over that didn't burn when you were burning your crowns down on the top, which we will get to in a moment. And uh, you need this to be able to hack stuff down to be able to get yourself in the spot where you want to be to be able to harvest or to be able to burn and clean so that way you don't catch the whole trellis system or whatever else on fire. So you want to take those down roll them on top and burn them out. So a really good important piece. You could also use this to be able to stick in the soil, pry up pieces and work with it. This is a really great piece. This is my little excavating pick. So this excavating pick, I like to go ahead and use this back end to be able to fold in between the root systems as we see right here, these little smaller ones. And this actually lets me fill inside there. So whenever I go in, I could actually kind of move little different parts out of the way and I could actually see where I'm working with without destroying my material. There's literally a piece removed on purpose just due to the fact that I'd be able to fit it in between something like this. So this is a really great piece. You could take this piece and what you could do is you could jam it in the ground, you could press and you could rock out the rhizome right there and just work your way and rock out your rhizome the whole way down. And that's a really smart way to be able to move your rhizome without destroying it. So right now, let's go ahead and jump onto some uh, rhizome cutting. Okay, folks. So let's go ahead and get down to the demo. So when you're removing rhizomes, normally rhizomes or your crown itself should be buried down. You don't want all this woody cuttings to be exposed, anything like that. This is how you get pathogens. This is how you get germs. And this is how you get disease. So... By the time, whenever you get to the end of your season, you want to make sure you recover these up due to erosion, whether it's a drip system or flood irrigation, anything like that. Main concern, cover these up. So you want to make sure that these sit in a nice good bed. Normally and typically, whenever you're bearing a rhizome, you want it at least six inches in some very well-drained, good sandy soil, such as this soil right here. This is really good. This is our New Mexico soil, and this has a lot of our organic ingredients induced into it. We use blood meal, bone meal, worm castings, homemade and store-bought uh, compost. We also use fish emulsions and we make sure that everything is taken care of with tons of love. So we have a pre-dug part right here and I will get over here to this side and we will show you how to go ahead and break into a crown. So just to show you on the demonstration of the removal, remember our pick. So we're going to go ahead and come in. This allows us to fill. As soon as I caught that rhizome, I felt it. If it wasn't for that, I could glide through. And there's another one right below. As you can see that I pulled off a nodule. So, like I said, this allows me to be able to fill around. And then from there, start a delicate process of removal. If, it, if you're inside a commercial farm, originally there would be a disc blade that's going to run along the side of this. And it's going to glide straight across here and it's going to cut off any excess arms that are growing out in there and allow these crowns to stay. Now, if you're a smaller micro farm like ours or and you're trying to actually harbor your rhizomes from a crown completely out of this, this is a great demo. If you were doing it in another way commercially, either it'd be a front end loader, you'd come in and you just dig up this one big section and slowly drop out the bucket and then have your guys pull out the whole crown and shake out the crown and then start cutting rhizomes. But this demonstration is gonna show you how we do it. So as we come in, you can see how we have nodules that are right here. So you wanna be very, very careful. Like I said, the less hand contact, the better. You have oils on your hands, you have different types of stuff on you. So you wanna make sure you don't really contaminate these. And we're getting right to our main crown right here. We're gonna take our razor we're going to come in one cut is usually what you want to go with the more you shake that razor in there the more you shake that utensil in there you're spreading more oils from the blade you're spreading more oils from yourself if you touch the blade 
you're getting different types of composites of alloys that shouldn't be inside there in the first place. So make sure that you want to only run with one cut if possible. Now these are little tap roots that are coming out. These are the actual roots. This is the stem of the plant that grows underground. Rhizomes are a very beautiful plant. Um, the beauty about why they're so cool and how they're so unique is say for instance if we had a bad drought year this plant's able to maintain its whole life cycle for a year or two without really needing too much natural resources to be able to maintain itself before it actually die off each one of these sectors right here could be cut off and turned into a new plant all the way down so this is a very unique piece that could actually produce a lot and become invasive in its own way if not taken care of so now that we're coming down this way like i said you want to be able to fill around we have an upper one that's actually blocking us so what's going on is we're going to remove these pieces as you can see there's nodules that are coming out right here so that tells me i'm getting really close but i got to be really sensitive with this so now we're going to take our pick go down i can fill the top of it right there and come up you can see that I'm applying pressure to it. Now that we've found our depth, we're gonna come through, cut the tap. And what's gonna happen is, We're gonna find out where our lead is stuck. So I'm gonna take this piece. And there you go. From here, this would be buried in a six inch. Um, you'd want an embankment like this. You don't wanna just jam it in the ground. Uh, so you want the embankment. You wanna be able to make sure that it gets a good well draining. So that's why we say the embankment's always good. And this one is going to end up in our tray right here. These go to propagation. So from here to there. When this gets home, aloe will be applied to this back end right here or wherever else we cut on here. And this will actually heal the, the cut right there without allowing pathogens to get sealed into it. Think about like you getting cut and then you're not putting like something to like clean it or even seal it up. So we try to make sure that these come in the best style in the most healthiest manner. And as you can see, this is a very, very beautiful rhizome as it's noduling out in different areas, which means this is going to be a good producer for a one-year plant. Different years will give you different styles of rhizomes, too. I want you guys to keep in mind. So whenever you see something like this, first year is going to be nothing but tap roots. They're going to come out like this. Second year, you're going to see smaller rhizomes like this that will barely edge out from this crown. By the third year, they will start stretching all the way through your rows. And you have to keep these little guys really maintained. As you can see, this one right here, since we actually feed so well and everything, this is only a two-year Columbus. And I have not seen anybody really pull anything too big like that within the two-year bracket. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are pulling some way bigger ones actually than us. But, you know, we're getting really healthy nodules, as you can see. These are great for... Uh, frying up and stir fry or frying them up like asparagus real nutty when they're at this white point so this is also a good source no matter what whenever you're looking at these different types of products there's always something good that comes from the beginning all the way to the end so let's go ahead and harvest up another rhizome so as you can see there's this big one that i'm working with right here let's go ahead and find our way around here like I said, you don't want to disturb too much of your root system, like how I already broke that. So we're just going to cut that since it's already broken so I can move that. And you can see how these tap roots are holding me in. So we work our way down. And I mean, don't worry about cutting roots because when you cut roots, you actually make them profusely root more, which is the cool thing about roots. Now with rhizomes, it's a different thing. Once you cut it, that's when it becomes its own new plant. Like I said, it's an asexual thing. So We work our way down. See all these tap roots I'm pulling on up. Tells you how vigorous and healthy the system is. 
let's find where we're caught. Irony is, is when you cut through this, these things are so juicy, I could feel the water squirt on me from these. As you remember the blade tip, just quick butting in. Okay, right next to the right room on that point. From there. Take our trusty razor. We're gonna cut all the anchoring points. Try not to split or rise them along the way. Remember our tip, going along the way. See there's something right there. There's like a big rhizome under there, so we want to be careful. And I believe that's our last anchoring point. Yeah, it's a little tricky guys. Just gonna take it on out. little tap at the bottom shake off that dirt so you can see where everything's sitting at so as you can see we have a beautiful taproot system that started here on the bottom these are the parts that are going to go deep down and they're going to go ahead and make sure that this plant stays alive with extra suction towards the end right there because as soon as it starts yielding up higher this plant really does take a bigger consumption and takes a lot of good fertilizer uptake um, I've noticed these are really great about pulling nitrogen out of the ground, so we really have to always stay up on our nitrogen with these guys. But this is a really beautiful cut, and you can see how I accidentally shimmed an edge, which is all right, but it just lets you know that you got to be a little more careful whenever you're dealing with a product like this. They're really sensitive. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and track down the next goodie. So, prying up, prying up. Got a lot of taproot right there. And a good way to find something too is, is you can find where the tip of the bind started originally. So you can see there's a piece right there. So let's go for that one right there. And it'd be smart to have air compressor with you if you have a chance. Make sure you don't bury your tools too. Very viable, smart uh, thing not to do. Here we go. And we're feeling around again since we're getting real close. See how I found something. Just a tap root. Top. Yep. There you are. So, just gonna be careful over here. Gonna be a judging blade. Remember, folks, you want to make sure you have a good grip. Very, very good grip. One cut. Beautiful. You couldn't ask for more beautiful rhizomes. Look at those clusters that are breaking out. And you look at the back end. This is usually what I like to look at right away. This is the first thing I always look at whenever I'm messing with something like this. If I start seeing black blotching, anything that's like crazy that's coming in on the edging right here, or browning, or anything that looks like it's taking over, almost like how you're looking at a potato that gets a black eye on it. Those are those different types of symptoms you want to be looking at these to make sure that you have healthy rootstock.
which is always going to be the most important thing because when you're a customer if you are selling these things first thing they want to know is how healthy is my rootstock that i'm buying from you and if i'm going to be buying from you again so with that being you want to make sure once you get a good piece and say for instance that you're going to go ahead and plant I like to take the base of this, take my blade, from there, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get to planting the rhizome. As you can see, I have a bank over here. This bank is actually gonna be getting another three inches added to it. Um, mixture of soil and fertilizer and compost that will go on top of this. We're getting ready to go into our grow year. So we got this soil right here. As you can see, I got some sodium buildup that kind of happens right here that leaches from here. I'm right next to the real grande, so this is always gonna happen in my end. So I kind of like to make sure I turn this soil a lot. So I'll go ahead take it make sure it's got a good good roll as last year we went ahead and we spun a lot of 20 30 year old composted cow manure into it so we get some really 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 good outbreaks over here it's benefits so let's go ahead and stir it up break this up like I said, well drainage is everything. You want to make sure that everything is well drained. If you got little pieces like this that are sitting in there, don't think about composting them in. Check them out. You don't need that in there. Anything in there that could be rhizomatic besides a hop, you don't want. Much like this. This is a plant rhizome from a different type of plant out here. And this plant will constantly come up no matter how many times you break off the head of it. So, you want this out of there for sure. So, on to it. We take our trusty excavator. We're gonna run through. We use our pick edge first so it drags through. And as you can see, I yanked out another rhizome out of there of another type of plant that we don't want in there. And that's why I like this type of uh, pick. This works really well for me. I can see another one that was sitting right there. So, you know, be really, really, really um, on it in your soil when you're messing with it as you can see how we got some more coming through here take those out so this doesn't become a base to us in the middle of the summer and we're fighting it right next to our plant so our plant right here as you can see we have tap roots we have our nodules the nodules you always want pointing upward don't just take this thing and shove it down like that Yes, it will try to go ahead and pull its nodules and actually try to make itself form around like this, but you're stressing it a lot more and you're gonna have a plant that's gonna take a harder summer. So, as you can see, we're gonna go ahead and take this piece. Let's widen out our hole. We've got a good depth. It's about the length of my hand in, which is what I'm looking for. I'm gonna come in right here. I'm gonna take my tap root. And I'm not going to try to bundle this. If you swirl this around, this is going to turn into a big root ball. And that's not what we're looking for. So I point one tap root that way. One tap root this way. The rest of them can spread and search. But you don't want them covering over your rhizome. This rhizome is going to end up forming into its own little piece. Take our dirt. Come across. We want to make sure our berm is real nice. From there we want to have something just a quick marker and then I'll come back and I'll shove a stake right there and that's gonna go ahead and get some uh, we'll get some jute twine on top of that which will go and be either a double or a triple string and uh, from there once it starts coming up we'll go ahead and we'll start training her I hope that uh, we could be very informal to you guys over here at stone lizard I know this isn't exactly like you know all the way info on this but if there's any questions that you have, feel free to ask us. We would be more than happy to share any type of knowledge that we know. And uh, we will work with you guys in any way. And if you need any type of plant materials, clean root stock, anything like that, we are nursery certified. So we have those types of things going for us right now. 
and uh, we will constantly be broadening our horizons with newer, uh, better strains that will be to the New Mexican public. So uh, thank you guys very much, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll go ahead and let it get back down to 